My name is Tyler Osterly. I am an addiction psychiatrist here in the Department of Psychiatry and Psychology at Mayo Clinic. And I work with individuals who struggle with opioid use disorders. I'm here to talk about a recent article that will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Medication Assisted Treatment for Opioid Use Disorders. So in our article, we discuss, uh, first of all, the history of opioid use disorders and treatment for opioid use disorders. We go through the three FDA-approved medications for opioid use disorders, including methadone, buprenorphine, and uh, naltrexone. Uh, in our discussion of these medications, we review the uh, benefits and the negatives of each medication. Uh, and discuss how providers might consider utilizing these medications in their practice. Um, first of all, we recommend that uh, providers identify um, clearly whether or not one of their patients has an opioid use disorder. Uh, then we recommend that they uh, consider with their patients thoughtfully uh, each one of these medications and discuss with their patients the relative risks and benefits of each one of these medications. Uh, we do include in our article uh, some suggestions on ways to uh, discuss these medications with your patients. We also include in our article uh, some of the medication um, uh, side effects that uh, have made these medications difficult to implement in outpatient practice. So the first medication that we talk about is methadone. Uh, methadone has been around the longest and was first identified as an option for individuals with opioid use disorder in the 60s. Uh, during that time there was an outbreak of heroin in a lot of the big cities throughout the country and physicians were looking for good ways to treat individuals with heroin use disorder. And they hypothesized that if they used a long-acting opioid to treat uh, individuals with opioid use disorders, that they would uh, be able to intervene in the cycle of heroin use that invoked uh, quick relapse and um, significant withdrawal symptoms that uh, forced an individual who was feeling very uncomfortable to commit criminal acts in order to get more heroin. Um, even throughout the day, these individuals would use the heroin, get high, and then withdraw and then need to steal or, or, or do illegal activities in order to get more heroin. And this was a huge problem, as you can imagine, for big cities. And so uh, the recommendations were to study methadone, whether or not it could break that cycle. And as methadone was studied, they found out pretty quickly that it worked. Uh, it did just that. It helped an individual who was struggling with opioid use disorder take an opioid once a day and they no longer had the, the high and then the withdrawal effects and the need to go out and steal um, in order to uh, support uh, their addiction. And so this was the first success in treating uh, individuals with uh, opioid addiction. Um, after that success, there were trials of a medication called naltrexone, and this medication was, a, was just the opposite of methadone. It was a blocker. Um, for uh, opioids and it would go in and completely block uh, the opioid receptor. Now they found out early on that uh, individuals needed to take this medication in order to have it be effective and it wasn't very reinforcing for folks to take so the individuals who were most successful on this medication were those who were externally motivated and we discuss that a little bit in our article. Um, one of the newer advances for this medication is an injectable form. This injectable form allows an individual to come in once a month, receive an injection, and then they don't have to think about the medication for the rest of the month. And so it's there, it's on board, it provides its full effect for a full month. And it looks like that medication can be as effective as other medications if taken appropriately. So one of the medications that uh, has become one of the standards of care for opioid use disorder is buprenorphine and this is also known as Suboxone uh, more commonly. This medication can be prescribed in outpatient settings, which offers a great advantage over methadone, which requires uh, individuals to come in to very specific methadone clinics uh, daily in order to get their methadone. Um, this buprenorphine or Suboxone medication uh, allows a, a standard uh, practitioner, a standard physician 
to uh, give a prescription for buprenorphine to their patients and treat them um, in a normal office setting, which again is a huge advantage. Uh, this medication is shown to be as effective uh, as the other medications in treatment for severe opioid use disorders. And the advantage that it has over naltrexone is that it does activate the opioid receptor and that activation does provide a reinforcing effect for this medication. So it encourages folks to continue to take the medication. Individuals will withdraw if they stop taking it. And so it's been a huge success in treatment for individuals with opioid use disorders. What we know looking at the long-term studies is that methadone, likely because it's been around the longest and been studied the longest, really has been shown to have the most um, uh, retention of patients in the long term. Um, but as we uh, get to know these other medications better and uh, more studies are being done with these medications over time, uh, likely these, medica these other two medications described will have similar outcomes. The, uh, the conclusion of our article uh, really discusses the, um, the need for more providers to utilize these medications in their practice to treat individuals with opioid use disorders. Uh, we also emphasize that uh, if applied thoughtfully, these medications can be relatively simple to utilize for most physicians uh, in their practice. So we encourage you to read our article and uh, think uh, carefully about how you could utilize these medications in your practice. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.